How do you modify and enhance your existing Python code without altering its original state? with decorators. In today's episode, I'm gonna share with you guys real world practical examples, breaking it down so you can get started using decorators right now in your code. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back guys for another episode of Code with Josh. For obvious reasons, I'm Josh and I'm stoked to have you guys here. Before I dive into today's video, help me out, do me a favor, hit that like button and subscribe. That really does help out my channel as we reach a wider audience. And guys, happy new year. If this is the first video of 2025, and in today's video, I'm breaking down decorators in Python. I guarantee you've probably seen these used in other projects or applications, but why do we use these? When do we use these? And more importantly, how do you make them? That's what we're doing in today's video. Guys, the first link in the description is my weekly Python newsletter, The Nerd Nook, where I write about content requested by you guys and other trending topics in Python. I do this to break it all down and share with you guys everything I've learned so you can learn better. Guys, that's the first link in the description. Head on down there, check out the Nerd Nook, join in on all the action. Let's get right into why you're all here. Decorators in Python. All right, I've prepared three code examples for you guys. This first one is just to show you and break down what a decorator is. Now, if you've ever played chess, chess has three parts to our game. We have the beginning, the middle, and the end. You can see here I have a function called middle game. All it's doing is printing the middle game. A decorator allows us to modify or enhance our code without actually changing the core functionality of this function. So if I want to create a decorator, I'm going to come here and we're going to create a, a new function called my decorator. This is a decorator which takes another function as an argument. So I'm putting in func to specify that I'm going to be giving this function, my decorator, another function. Inside here, we're going to create a wrapper. Now you can call this anything, but typically it's going to be called wrapper. That's just a standard naming convention. When I call this decorator, let's say we want to print a few things. We want the beginning game. And we want the end game, right? Because chess, we have three versions of the game. Okay, now inside here, I'm gonna actually call whatever function I give this decorator. So whatever it is, I wanna call that function. At the end of our wrapper, we need to make sure that we give back our wrapper when we're done. So return wrapper. Now, I have made a decorator. When I use this decorator, when I use this function, it's taking a function, it's gonna print this, call the function we give it, and then print our end game. To use this, all you need to do is go before a function you wanna use it with, and we use the at symbol. And then we type the name of the decorator, so at my decorator. This decorator is linked to the function directly below it. Now when I run middle game, it's first gonna call our decorator, and then our decorator is actually calling the function itself, and printing everything we have inside. So when you run your code, we are gonna see our three lines printed neatly, and we're gonna see here the beginning game, middle game, and the end game. Okay, so that really breaks down how the decorator works. Let's show you two practical examples that you can use right now with your code to enhance it. Here I've made a function called slow function, right? We all know that we make certain functions and some take longer to run than others. So what I want to do is I want to create a decorator which allows me to track the time it takes one of our functions to run. Now for simplicity I've imported time and I'm just allowing this function to sleep for two seconds before it completes its action. So if you run your code it's going to take two seconds to complete. Let's create a decorator which actually times this and tells us how long this function took to run. So coming up here I'm going to make a decorator. Let's call this decorator timer because it's going to be used to time things. And I'm going to say here function. Now inside here we're going to create our wrapper. And this wrapperator for now is not going to take anything. What do we want to do when the decorator is called? Remember that this is running first. 
So I'm going to create a timer. So I'm going to say start is equal to time. Then we want to call our function. So I'm going to create a result and let's just call the function we give it. Once the function is done running, we create a new time. Okay, so end is equal to time. Okay, the purpose of this is to showcase how long the function takes. So in order to get the name of the function, we can actually take our function and we can get the name. So what function is running? This is going to return slow function because this is the function that will be passed into our decorator. We can say took, how long did the function take? We're going to say end minus start, and let's just round that down. Let's say uh, two decimal points over uh, seconds to run. Okay, um, at the end of our wrapper, we are going to return result. And then at the end of the timer, we are going to return the wrapper, the inner function. Now I can use this and I can really wrap it above anything. I could be like at timer. Let's run your code. You have a decorator linked to it now. And let's see how long it takes that function to run. We start time, we end time. There we go. Function is complete. The slow function took two seconds to run. Now we can better actually enhance this because let's face it, if I want to reuse this decorator with other functions, not just this function, uh, we don't know what the function is going to accept as an argument. Slow function isn't really doing anything. Okay, so for example, if we have a function here, let's do, uh, let's do some math and let's say math takes A and B. And we can return, let's just say, uh, I don't know, A times B divided by 3. Okay, when I call math, or I guess our function's called sum math, I need to give it, right, our two arguments. So, for example, 20 and 50. I still want to use timer, though, to time how long my function takes to run. If you run your code, let's examine what happens here. Guys, if you're getting value in today's video, to help me out, hit that like button and subscribe. That really does help out my channel. Boom, I'm getting an error, right? It's telling me I have a type error because the local wrapper takes zero positional arguments, but two were given, right? We gave it two numbers. To make our decorator more reusable, in our wrapper, I'm just going to say it, it could take a number of arguments. It could also take a number of keyword arguments, right? Both of these are being given to our function here. So now this timer uh, decorator, I can use this with anything. When I run this, you can make other functions and you could just add the timer to it to really see how long it took to run. So some math took zero seconds. It ran on the spot, right? So there's our second example of how you can make a decorator. We can use this and link it to other functions that we make for a use case. Okay, let's go into our last decorator example. For our last example, I wanted to show you guys a better use case for this that I actually use in some of my programs. And let's imagine here we have an unstable function. So this could be a function that deals with API calls, for example. And sometimes your API call isn't always working. You want to automatically rerun the function if it's not working. Um, in this case here, unstable function, if this is true, I'm going to raise a value error. So uh, I'm randomly choosing true or false. If we get true, I'm going to raise an error. When I run this, if we're lucky, it's going to uh, call success. If we're unlucky, it's going to raise the error. So there you go. It triggered false, or excuse me, it triggered true, and it rose the error for us. So I'm getting a value error. But I want this to keep running right? Because I want to try again. What was the issue? Could that be fixed by running the code again? Well, we could build a decorator that you could use for any functions that maybe you think are unstable. Let's create a function and I'm going to call this retry on a failure. Okay. And this is going to take the max number of times. So like how many times do you want to retry this? So max retries, let's just say is equal to three. Now inside here, I'm going to make my decorator. 
So I made a function because I'm giving it the keyword arguments in the beginning. Then let's just say, okay, I'm gonna make a, a decorator. So decorator. This decorator is gonna take the function now. Okay, so just like in the previous two examples, we started by making the decorator which first took the function. But now I'm making a function that takes the number of retries, then we're making our decorator. Now inside this decorator is where we can still make our wrapper. And just like before, this might take a number of arguments, a number of keyword arguments. I want this to be more reusable, so I'm giving it args and quarks. So let's begin by creating a counter. Let's say retries is initially set to zero. While retries is uh, less than max retries, then I wanna try my code again. What is our code? What function do I wanna try again? So I'm gonna return the function, right? And inside the function, we are just gonna give it our args and quarks again. Uh, if we try that and it doesn't work, right, I can create an exception, uh, accept exception as E. I'm going to increase the number of retries, okay, because I've tried once. And then let's just print like error. And we are going to say like retrying. Uh, we can do retries and the number of tries we have left. So max retries. We're going to do here retries. There we go. Okay, um, if we get to the max number of retries, we've tried three, four, five times, and the function is still failing, then we could be like failed after maximum retries. Okay, um, outside that, we are going to return our wrapper, and then because we're nesting so much, we have three functions, I'm actually gonna return our decorator as well. Okay, so, here we go. Now I have a decorator function, which is automatically gonna try the function again. So if I come down here, I'm gonna say at retry on failure. We're linking our decorator. How many retries do we wanna give it? I've already said three. Maybe I wanna give this function five, All right? I'm gonna overwrite the number of retries. Let's run our code again, and let's see this in action. So I got success, I lucked out the first time. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna run this a few, there we go, look at that. So error, random failure, random failure, retrying, retrying, failed after maximum retries, okay? If we run this again, success, there we go. So here, it actually failed two times, then we got a success. So a decorator is a way for us to modify and enhance our code without altering the state of the original function. I can create a decorator and we can link it to other functions and use this in our code. Well guys, there you have it, Python decorators. Any questions you have, I love helping you guys out. So drop a comment, let me know your questions. I genuinely hope you got value in today's video. If you did, hit that like button and subscribe. That really does help out my channel reach more people because the YouTube algorithm is driving me nuts. And remember, the first link in the description, that is my weekly Python newsletter, where I write a few times a week, releasing it only for you guys to help you guys go from zero to knowing. First link in the description, head on down, check it out. All the other links I have down in the description are dedicated to helping you grow wherever you're at in your journey. Well guys, until next week's episode of Code with Josh, I will see you then.